Today we're going to take a look at using assembly owners in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. There are several potential ways you could manage your production requirements in Business Central. These include assembly orders, production orders, and even jobs. Today we're specifically looking at assembly orders which can be used when you have fairly simple assemblies to put together and you don't want to uh, track and manage necessarily all of the steps in your productions. You want something fairly simple. There are several ways we can set up assembly orders, either assemble to stock or assemble to order. Today we're going to look at assemble to order, which means essentially that each order line has a related assembly order that's specifically linked to that particular order line. Assemble to stock would mean that you would see the demand and you would plan to produce to stock and then you would later ship those units. That's used when the assemblies are more standard in nature. So in this case we're going to create a quotation. So we'll go ahead and enter our item which happens to be an enterprise server and because it's set to assemble to order it's automatically when I put a quantity going to release an assembly order to create that item. Let's take a quick look at some of the key settings on the item that facilitate this process. So if we look at the item record and we go to the replenishment section I've set this item to be an assembly rather than a production order. In addition if I look at the assembly policy, I've chosen assemble to order rather than assemble to stock. Assemble to order means essentially there'll be an assembly linked to that particular order line. And when I drill in and I look at the BOM, I see that I do in fact have a BOM created, which includes all the components needed to assemble a server. Plus I've got some labor uh, time to assemble those items into a server. So going back to the quote, from the quote itself, I can actually drill down and take a look at that assembly order that was created. And I may want to make some small changes. So this particular customer is looking for a server uh, with a bit more power. So I'm going to add some 32 megabit chips. And because of that, I'm also going to change the estimated labor time and I'm going to assume it takes about an extra hour to complete that. So when we look at the unit cost and the selling price, that came from that original bomb. We've made some changes, so we probably want to update both the cost, and we have a function called roll up costs, and you'll see we go from 503 to 574. And I can do the same thing on the selling price, where we started at 838, and it's going to update that to 1089. So we can take into account those small changes we might make with that particular assembly. So now let's assume our customer has contact contacted us and they're ready to place the order. I'm just going to update those dates uh, and say that we want it finished for the 24th and that he wants it delivered on the 25th. And I can go ahead, it's going to update the lines that are related to that, and I can go ahead and convert that into an order. Let's go ahead and open up that particular order. A couple of things we'll notice is that the quantity came across. The costs and the selling price that we had recalculated are still in effect, so we see the correct selling price. We can also drill down and take a look at the assembly order related to that line and we see that the changes we had made in the quoting process carried through to the order and we have indeed three chips now instead of one and we have four hours of labor. We also have the ability to, if we had an, an inventory warning here on the left, if we were missing those components in stock, it would let us know. 
and we could potentially select a substitution. So if an a su item substitute is available for a particular component, we can see that here, see how much we have in stock and make the change. So now if we assume that we've actually put that assembly together in production and we're ready to ship, we can go ahead and post and invoice that order. And it's also going to do all the related transactions for that assembly. So I'll go ahead and, and open that posted invoice. And we can see the details here. And if we go take a look at my posted assemblies, my posted assembly orders, we can see the details of that particular posting. And we can navigate to the statistics. And we can see that the standard cost was 315. The expected cost because of our changes was 324 for material and the actual cost for material was indeed 324. The labor cost uh, was uh, the original bomb was 150. Our expected because of our change is 200 and it actually matches as well. So we can see uh, what a standard server would have cost. We can see what our modified assembly should have cost and we can see the actual that was posted. We can also navigate to the transactions that the system did, the actual GM postings, and we can see here that we've got some item ledger entries and indeed it did automatically deduct those quantities from inventory including the change we made to the chips. It deducted three and we can also see the labor entries that the system automatically generated and we can see that instead of three hours it actually recorded four hours of time. So that's a quick look how we can use the assembly feature in Dynamics 365 Business Central in an assembled order mode to easily manage simple assemblies and to easily automate the inventory and the labor and overhead transactions related to assembling those items.